Hi guys, it's just another blah day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where we have slipped, slid our way into Thursday, which is somewhere, I don't know, is it October 7th, 2020 today, somewhere around there and Oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles, and this is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza, doing what we do every day, and that's chronicling the collapse of pretty much everything. Uh, and guys, I was going to uh, dive into the story that is the biggest story on the planet, although not many people realize it about, you know, being that September 2020 being the hottest September in the history of record keeping. Uh, and how 2020, even though it's not an El Nino year, it might even be a La Nina year, might end up being the single hottest year on the planet in history. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, guys, I, I could sit here and spend the next 30 minutes talking about this, but I'm quite sure that my uh, colleagues here in the Doomosphere, I'm sure that Paul and Kevin and, well, I think Sandy might be down for the week, but I'm sure there's plenty of other doomers talking about this story, so why should, uh, wh what do I have to add to this story? You get it or you don't. So, uh, and, and of course, September of 2020 was probably the coldest September of my life, uh, where I, we had our first frost here in the Finger Lakes of New York on September 18th. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, uh, guys, as much as I would like to sit here and tell you that what is on my mind today is the fact that this was the hottest September in history, what is on my mind today is what is on the mind of people in and out of the Dumasphere and that is the collapse of this country, which we are, by this country, uh, I, I, I'm just talking about as more and more people wondering, as I am, whether in the next, within the next 30 days, are we going to be somewhere between martial law, civil war, and the beginnings of Mad Max in this country, no matter which one of these goons uh, wins wins this election. The, uh, you know, the uh, election of 2020 has just become a sick, twisted joke, but as far as a collapsitarian is concerned. What we are witnessing today, guys, I believe, is just a snapshot of what we're going to be seeing more and more and more of over the balance of the 21st century. Uh, this is what collapse looks like in, in the beginning where at least the citizens of uh, of at least this country, whatever is left of the American empire, and, and I'm as guilty as this as anybody, we, we have completely left civility behind. Uh, and of course, I find myself uh, in the unique position of having both Trump and Biden derangement syndrome. Uh, you know, we, we are deranged uh, as, as a country. Uh, and 
just just so you guys understand this, I honestly don't believe this time around we are going to end up in Civil War, Martial Law, Mad Max, but for the first time in my life, I do not rule it out uh, that whichever way this election goes, that we are so uh, just at each other's throats. And again, I am as guilty as anyone. I'm at pretty much at everyone's throats uh, on, on both sides of this fake debate. Uh, I mean, this, this, is the, this is scary times. So for the first time in my life, I do not rule out that somewhere between martial law and civil war and Mad Max, can, we can be in it in the, within the next 30 days. And so this is why I have been wrestling with the decision whether to get out of here, out of New York, and flee to Florida before Election Day and get myself squared away down there before November 3rd or hunker down here till uh, the middle of November, but there is no way, no way that I am going to be traveling on the internet and the interstate highway system in this country uh, between, let's say, October 30th and November 10th, minimally. So. I had originally planned to stay here until November 15th, but uh, I am, in case you guys haven't been able to figure this out, I am in the middle of the single darkest depression I have been in in 10 years, going uh, on about a month now, uh, and that I simply could not withstand the changing of the clocks backwards, uh, which will happen on November 1st. So I have opted to head to Florida, where, you know, my neighbors down in Florida have gotten together and I, I live at the very end property uh, on a dead end uh, dirt road in the Point Lonesome Swamp, and my neighbors, all joking aside, have gotten together and identified these giant trees they're going to chainsaw down over the road uh, on, you know, November 4th, uh, if we do descend into civil war, and, and my neighbors are telling me, you need to get down here, Sam, and get in before we cut these trees down. Uh, and, and, and this is, you know, I, I have never in my entire life, I'm 61 years old, so what have I been through 15 elections in my life then we have never been at this point I, as, as a country, never in my entire life have I just had conversations with neighbors uh, talking about this. Uh, it, 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 this isn't just in the doomosphere or in the rumor sphere anymore. It's just average Joes. Uh, you know, the building inspector here in Tioga County, New York, is driving around uh, with a loaded gun in the console of his, uh, of his county vehicle. Uh, you know, th 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 this, is, th th this is no joke, people. And again... I, anyone who thinks that I have gone around the bend and, uh, and, and swallowing all of these conspiracy, wacko conspiracy theories on the right or the left 
as I say, I think there is a 98% chance that we're going to uh, come through Election Day and it's just going to be one more day of, of rising hatred on this planet. But uh, this is the new normal. Uh, and this, you know, it's just par for the course as I, as I chronicle the collapse of everything. The, uh, the election in the fall of 2020 is just a perfect example. Uh, so right here, you know, on, on, on good old... USA Today, this long involved article right here on the mainstream media, USA Today, the country has lost its mind. Polls warning of civil war and violence uh, show deep partisan chasm over election. And, uh, and, and what USA Today, I, I, I will go ahead, I'm not going to sit here and read this long uh, article from USA Today, but it's talking about uh, th this very thing that I, was, that I was thinking about. I open up the mainstream media and here it is. Uh, Bill Fry, age 61, is a supporter of President Donald Trump in rural Ohio who doesn't share much in common politically with Matt Edelman, age 29, a Joe Biden backer in Brooklyn, New York. Except this, they both worry about the legitimacy of the upcoming presidential election and fear an outcome that appears to an outcome that appears tainted could heighten our nation's already frayed psyche and exacerbate violence in the streets. They're not alone. A new poll shows a large swath of Americans harbor deep reservations about the election results weeks before Election Day and are concerned about what actions people <clears throat> uh, what actions people might resort to as a consequence. Uh, so the first poll, so they go, they're looking at several polls in this. This first poll of right at 2,000 registered voters found that nearly half, 47% uh, disagree with the idea that the election is likely to be fair and honest. Uh, and 51% will not generally agree on who is the legitimately elected president of the United States. Uh, another poll of 1,500 voters found that 56% said they expect to see an increase in violence as a result of the election. Now, I do uh, I, I think it's a no-brainer that we are going to see an increase in violence after the election. Of course, the big question is, what is that going to look like? Uh, is this the, 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 an, an increase in violence, I would say before the election, but certainly after the election, no matter who wins, we are going to see an increase in violence. The question, of course, is are, are we going to see an increase? Are you going to see an increase in violence in your front yard? And uh, so... 
at least my front yard uh, in Florida is at the end of a mile long uh, one way dirt road uh, that may or may not have a dozen giant oak trees chainsawed down across it. Uh, anyway, so they, uh, so this long involved, uh, good old USA Today article, and, and good for USA Today, uh, it, you know, breaking all this, uh, all this down, uh, This is Alex Theodoridis, an associate professor of political science at the University of Massachusetts, has studied our country's growing partisan divide. Uh, <clears throat> quote, quoting this guy, a close contested election in our hyper-polarized political climate could very well produce isolated incidents of partisan violence, he said. And this is what I think is the most likely outcome. Quote, my research and, by, and work by others shows that most partisans are willing to metaphorically dehumanize from the, dehumanize those from the other party and that this dehumanization predicts greater tolerance for partisan violence. And he said each side is apt, uh, you know, each side is apt. It makes no difference what side we're talking about. Uh, and then this is, uh, this is a Trump supporter, uh, quote, a Trump supporter, if Trump wins, I fear chaotic, destructive hate will continue. Trump derangement syndrome really exist and some people will not stop and this is a Trump supporter uh, and, and that is what you know is what is where we've gone over the line that even the the people supporting Donald Trump at this point uh, Yes, uh, whatever, this is continuing interviewing with this Trump supporter, whatever the outcome is, I feel like there will be a rise in violence. Okay, so now this is USA Today talking about our country being on the verge of civil war. Uh, those sentiments that we just talked about might help explain the conclusion of another new survey that finds a majority of U.S. adults believe that our country is, quote, on the verge of a second civil war. Uh, and of those... Four of ten in that survey said they strongly agree uh, with that sentiment expressed most sharply by those identifying themselves as very conservative or very liberal. Uh, once quoting Rich Thal, one of the pollsters, quote, this is the single most frightening poll result I have ever been associated with. Uh, he said that partisan tensions have been, quote, bubbling below the surface or just above for, uh, 
close quote, for quite some time, uh, blah, blah, blah. So, what is the consequence of that? How bad does this get? You've got people on the far left with guns, people on the far right with guns, and an unwillingness of political elites to condemn this. People are girding themselves for something awful to happen, close quote. And this, of course, is what is the definition of something awful. The poll does not define what a civil war would look like. Would it be armed confrontation in some areas or just widespread protest? Would it involve economic boycotts or simply family members and friends who no longer speak to one another? Then they talk about Joe Biden uh, giving a speech yesterday and no, where do you think? Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, there you go. Uh, then they talk about, you know, friendships being destroyed uh, over this. Uh, anyway, so uh, getting back to the to the question of uh, or the statement, people are girding themselves for something awful to happen. Whether it's building inspectors uh, putting loaded guns in their cars, whether it's neighbors getting together to uh, identify the trees they're going to chainsaw over the road to keep out uh, Mad Max. Uh, you know, whether it's uh, collapsitarians deciding where to flee to. I want to thank uh, alert uh, listener Max from Finland uh, for sending me this one uh, from Reuters News. We're going to close with this for anybody uh, wanting to know what preparing for Mad Max looks like. Uh, you don't have to read uh, some dystopian uh, future novel you have to open up Reuters News this morning. U.S. survival camps to activate due to fear of election violence. A chain of U.S. survival communities plan to activate and open to members for the first time over fears of violence following the presidential election on November 3rd. Fortitude Ranch, love that name, Fortitude Ranch Camps in West Virginia and Colorado will open on Election Day to protect its members, the company's October newsletter said. Regardless of who wins the election, Fortitude Ranch expects a possible expects possible looting and violence that could develop into long-term widespread clashes. Uh, Fortitude Ranch CEO Drew Miller said uh, some on social media are fear civil war and he does not rule out that possibility uh, quote, this will be the first time we have opened for a collapse disaster, though it may end up not being so. We consider the risk of violence that could escalate in irrational, unpredictable ways into widespread loss 
of law and order is real, close quote. Uh, Fortitude Ranch, and Fortitude Ranch is, is one of many of these. Uh, th this is one, I, I assure you, that Fortitude Ranch is not the only one of these outfits uh, planning uh, for this in the next few weeks. Fortitude Ranch set up its first camp in West Virginia in 2015 and has two more in Colorado for an annual fee of around $1,000. Members can vacation in the camps in good times and then use them as a refuge in the event of a societal collapse. Members are required to own either a rifle or a shotgun to defend the communities. Uh, the company does not disclose membership numbers. Uh, continuing with this article from Reuters, U.S. security officials have warned that violent domestic extremists pose a threat to the presidential election itself, citing rising political tensions, civil unrest, and foreign disinformation campaigns. FBI and U.S. Department of Homeland Security memos have said threats by domestic extremists to election-related targets will likely increase in the run-up to the election, meaning between now and November 3rd, you're going to be seeing all of this. Uh, both major political parties have marshaled an array of lawyers to litigate election disputes. Fears of a disputed or undecided presidential contest have increased interest in the U.S. prepper movement, supplied by a multi-billion dollar, a multi-billion dollar industry selling everything from gas masks to dehydrated food to help people survive an apocalypse. Reuters News, guys. Reuters News. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up today's uh, Chronicle of the Collapse. Uh, and... Uh, finish shutting down my little uh, my little uh, dilapidated shack by the side of the road uh, getting it ready for winter. I have a semi prepper who uh, says he will hold down the fort uh, here this winter. We shall see about that but uh, I got to start packing up heading south, heading south to get to the end of the road. Me and the little dog need to get to the end of the road in the port, in the Point Lonesome Swamp while we still can. Enjoy the, what very well could be the hottest year in the history of record keeping while you still can. Bye guys.